I'm Ruth Lightfoot, and I was born in Duluth, Minnesota in 1905, and lived there until 1930. Uh, in 1930, I was married, and ever since then, I have lived in Connecticut. Well, a mother and father were very sensible parents. Father, he was an attorney, and he was strict, but he loved a good time, and he loved a good story. In 1916, he had the idea that he would buy some property up in the northern Minnesota that was available from the Alger Smith Lumber Company, the site of an old long, uh, lumber camp. It had been burned over, but anyway, he bought several hundred acres. Then every summer, why well, I'd go out with them for, oh, for anywhere from two to four or six weeks. We'd get up in the morning, the old Indian station, take a train to two harbors with our little pack sacks on our back, and get off the train there, get on the Duluth and Iron Range train, eventually probably ending in the uh, caboose. It, the farmer would meet us, a horse and a wagon, and we drove 14 miles up and down. It was an old corduroy road. And then once we got there, it was very comfortable. It was a log, very nice log house. We had running water and all the facilities. Uh, eventually a telephone, never any electricity. It had five bedrooms. It had a, a bath with tub and running water. Uh, had a tremendous living room, a great big fireplace a screen porch on two sides on which we ate. We used to sleep out there, but then when we would hear the wolves howl, we quickly scurried in the house. And we, the only light we used was lamp or candles. And we used candles at night going to bed. And mother used to give us hot lemonade and cheese um, sandwiches before we went to bed. I remember they were awful good. Mother and father used to take up with us, my sister and me, and usually four little girls. I can imagine my mother on rainy days, if it happened, putting up with six, and little girls' voices are terribly shrill, playing solitaire, ponce, uh, well, on the days that we couldn't go out. The rest of the time, we would help setting the table or picking the gar uh, vegetables and things like that. I can remember planting a hundred plants of cabbage in a thunderstorm in our bare feet. And I want the berries, the wild berries, strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. You could sit on your posterior and pivot and in no time at all have a big pail filled with the blueberries. Well, there were the, the lilacs and there were French lilacs, and as you or somebody else said, at 12 Walker Road we had some of them, too. Mother sent them on when we were in Orange. Father used to also go up there fishing. He had a place that was really sort of hidden in the <laughs> dense wood. And in garbage cans, great big aluminum garbage cans, um, he had a variety of things secreted. So when his friend said, well, Jim, one thing I bet you don't have here is this tuxedo. Well, he said, just wait a minute. And off he'd go to this garbage can and there pull out a tuxedo. Uh, he loved doing things like that. How did I meet Beepop? Well, I met Beepop because the first first semester at Smith, 
there were a few days. And Elizabeth Peck, she invited me to visit him during that interim period. And John and his mother lived next door, and he came to call. He passed the ginger ale, and he spilled it all over my dress. And it was a beautiful dress. It was a light blue and a pleated skirt, and it came from Bonwit Teller, and I was very proud of it, but it was oh, quite a mess. That's how I met him. Well, that's me, Pop, and me in May 29 on the rockery at San Susie. That was May 29 when he came out to visit us. And that's when he asked my father for a hand. I was married in Duluth. We were married at home. We went up to Saint Souci and spent our wedding night and the next two nights, and then came back to Duluth and took the train east, and he, he did business in Montreal and Quebec, and uh, we were there, and then we went back to Derby, where we were established. We used to go back every summer, and good trips, it was fun, it was on the train. Two nights and a day, and we went to a hotel in Chicago and waited all day until the night train for Duluth. And I, I went back with Jock when he was uh, nine months old, but he had beautiful curly hair, Everybody oohed and awed about him. And then I'd go with two, and then I went with three. It's too bad they had to raise that, but I can see apparently there was always the danger of fire. Well, I just wish I had it so that you people could have it, but it's gone. It's gone for good.